Good morning or good afternoon. It's lunchtime and it's 12.01 and I'm so excited to be doing my second book club. Um, I know that it's hard for people to make it um, so if you have to watch this later in the day because not everybody has a flexible schedule like mine um, this will replay at the end. So I'm going to wait just a minute for people to join that are trying to get on and um, when you get on, tell me your name and where you're from. And grab your book, grab something to drink, grab your lunch, whatever. We'll wait a minute, but grab your book, grab your drink, grab your worksheets. If you haven't got the worksheets, um, they are in the files of the group. I uploaded them this morning. I need to start doing that sooner, so I apologize for the last minute. Um, but yeah, the worksheets are in the files and next month I'll put them in a day before so you guys have a little bit more of a buffer to get ready. Um, but if you don't have those printed out, that's totally fine. Uh, you could just follow along with me and then even replay the video after you print them out and work your way through them. Last month we did the intentional year and it was pretty blank slate and I walked you through how to fill it out. This one, there's not so much to fill out. It's more of a organization of the information from the book because there was so much information that was so good. And I really wanted you to be able to take what Bonnie Gray was teaching and be able to have an actionable um, plan for how to move forward. So these worksheets this month aren't so free form. They're very um, structured and organized and it's more like a checklist for you. So I hope they're really helpful for you. Um, so now that some people are in here, tell me your name and where you're from and we'll get started in the comments. I see Amanda McCain. Hi, Amanda. And Leslie Johns. Good morning. So how far did you get in the book? Did you read it at all? Did you like it? could send me a emoji of what you thought of it. I read this book uh, in the spring. And so there is a soul care quiz that she has created, the author's created, and it's, um, it's free and it's a quiz, like a personality quiz. And so it kind of goes through, I don't, I think it's like 10 questions or something and ask, you know, what is stressing you out? Basically like the uncluttered house, your schedule, not feeling, you know, like you're enough, all kinds of things. Um, so she does this little 10 question free quiz to see how, what shape your soul is in. And so I actually went ahead and retook the quiz this morning. I took it a few months ago about, uh, oh, I took it about in the middle of July, I guess. And I, went back to those results and I noticed that two of mine were in like the, you need to pay attention to these areas and work on them right now. And two areas were like needs attention, but not urgent. And then I didn't have anything that was like, you're doing good. And so I thought this morning, I'm going to take that quiz again because six weeks ago when I finished uh, setting all this up and I started working on these practices, let's see where I'm at now. And I noticed that my score were way lower because I was so much more aware of these tools and the triggers in my life that I just kind of been like not noticing. Um, so I wasn't dealing with them if I wasn't noticing. So my scores now, I've got one area that is, you need a little bit of attention here, but it's not urgent. And the other three areas were like, you're doing a good job. And I know that that won't last forever, but that was really insightful for me to start these practices and then retake that test and see if I'd made any progress, which I really had. And when I was taking these questions, I was thinking, oh, I'm, this doesn't really bother me. And I know this bothered me before. So I encourage you, if you've taken the quiz, to try these practices, take it again later and see how you are. And I also know that different seasons, you're going to have different issues. I probably was going through a pain flare up. Um, so my physical... Uh, wellness score was a lot higher than it is now because I'm not going through that. So go ahead and go back to those as you see fit. So uh, let's see, emojis of what you thought of the book. 
Anybody? Hearts. We got a heart from Amanda. Love the book. Trying to fulfill the task every day. Haven't finished it yet, but I will. That's okay. We got a thumbs up. Yes. Thank you. Like the book. I'm glad. And if you haven't finished it, totally fine. So let's dig into... Oh, did you guys take the soul care quiz? Thumbs up if you took the soul care quiz. I put the link in the Facebook group right before I went live. Um, I'd love to know maybe what was an area you'd like to share that was, man, I really got to work on this area. Or if you'd want to share, oh, I'm actually doing really good in this area. What's anything you want to share from the quiz if you have taken it? And then I'm going to flip this camera around, try to do it gracefully and go through these worksheets with you guys. So I'll give you one sec to respond Hi, Kelly. Hi, Rhonda. Spiritual. Amanda said hers was spiritual. Both times mine was social, which I thought was interesting. Um, I love people. I love getting out with people. But I feel like as a mom, as a uh, business owner, work from home, uh, I feel like I get in that trap of being too busy and hanging out online for business a lot. And so it was a good reminder that I need to prioritize social time in my schedule. Uh, two people had spiritual, yes, good. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, let me get started on these worksheets. If you've got them, get them out. If you don't, you could take notes, just listen, replay, whatever. Hey, Rhonda, love Rhonda. Okay, let me try to do this gracefully. Right now you're looking at the ceiling. Working on finding a new tripod. Does anybody have a tripod they like? Let me know. Okay. I think you can see that. Unfortunately, Facebook needs me to go uh, vertical and my worksheet is horizontal. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope you could see this okay. Here's my little score. So you could see how I improved in my score. The lower the score, the better. Emotional, physical, spiritual, social were much higher six weeks ago than they are now. So I wrote that little note. Okay, so let's look here. I want you to take out your worksheets. If you haven't taken the quiz, that's fine. But just uh, we're going to write down our scores from the quiz. And the reason we're doing this is just to kind of prioritize, hey Kelly, the worksheets are in the file section of the Facebook group. So like when you go up to about members events, there'll be like a files tab. Um, and there's not too much to fill out right now. Um, so if you wanna get them afterward, that's totally fine too. But yeah, you can always pause this and go back and print those. Okay, so my soul care, I'm going to actually do what it was six weeks ago on mine. And so emotional wellness, I had a 17. And just fill out whatever yours was. Physical, 16. Spiritual, 21. And social, I had a 22. And so these two areas were like urgent, take care of them. And these were okay. Uh, I didn't have any that were like, you're doing great. So I was kind of uh, all over the place on this. And if you are too, that's totally fine. It doesn't mean you're a train wreck. It just means you need to take care of yourself and be aware of some ways that you can do that. So I've written those down. And since I'm just going to go in order of uh, the way the book goes, but you could then just focus on your top area and do the things on that worksheet and not even worry about the other worksheets unless you wanted to do those areas too. But I'm gonna go through all of them just because I don't know where everybody's scores are. Whoops, and not hit the camera. Okay, so basically there were three things, um, three areas that you can use as tools in uh, whatever area of wellness you're working on. And so she talks about emotional wellness, 
um, spiritual wellness, social wellness, and physical wellness. So emotional, are you stressed out all the time? Are you just easily triggered? Is there a lot of things going on in your life that you need to deal with? Um, social, are you getting out? Are you doing community? Are you doing things by yourself? Do you have uh, rocky relationships? Spiritual, are you connecting with God? Are you making time for that? Are you feeling connection when you're connecting with him? Do you know how to connect? Are you praying? Are you doing um, things to grow spiritually? And then the last one was physical. Obviously, are you eating right? Are you feeling good? Are you in pain all the time? Um, do you have health issues that need to be addressed? Uh, are you getting out and moving? And so emotional, here are, there's three sections for each one that she gives us tools. And what, the first thing that she introduced was breath prayers. And for every section of every uh, chapter, she has a sample breath prayer that you can do for that issue. So for emotional wellness, I wrote down the um, emotions you might be dealing with. If you're anxious, overwhelmed, worried for yourself or worried for others, if you're striving, your day is too much or your plans fall through. And then I've got a little color code here. Red is the thing you're going to say or think when you inhale. And blue is the thing that you're going to think or say when you exhale. And this is meditation. Um, it's just a focusing on that thought and being able to um, release it or change your, fo your thought focus. So, for example, if you're feeling anxious, it's hard to breathe in and say it at the same time. So you'd say um, it in your head. But you would breathe in and say, relax. And then as you breathe out, you'd say in your head, loosen my grip, Jesus. Or you can make it whatever you want. Um, if your day is overwhelming, you could breathe in and think, your steadfast love never ceases, Jesus. And then breathe out, your mercies are new every morning. And so these are just really good, simple practices um, for you to focus on your breath and focus on uh, what emotions you're going through so that you can change your thought pattern. Um, then every section has a challenge, which I really love. Um, all of her examples, there were so many. So I wanted to make these worksheets so you guys had all these resources. So for the challenges of emotional wellness, one was savor a cup of tea. And some of these are very straightforward, like, this one, if you go to page 22 in the book, I've even got it because some of them have really long descriptions or you're like, I don't understand what that is and the description will be there. So where you're gonna find them is where it says soul care challenge and then it will say what it is. Like this one is just giving you some facts about tea, about reducing anxiety um, and stress and why you should get a cup of tea. It's very simple and straightforward. And so this one you don't really need to look up, but if you want to, you can. And speaking of which, I've got some tea. So then you could do practice breath focus. If you're not sure about like, what is it with meditating? What are these breath prayers? I don't understand what she's talking about. Um, it can give you some more information on that right here. They also had by yourself some flowers, which I started doing and I'm loving. I don't know why I wait for my birthday or holiday and be like, finally, we have some flowers in the house because people know I like them. It's just so nice to go buy that $4 bouquet at, you know, Kroger's checkout or whatever and just have some nice fresh flowers. My family's been asking, why are, what's going on? Why are the flowers here? And I'm like, they're just pretty and it just makes me happy. So all these little ideas, one of them might really resonate with you and I'd encourage you to um, keep a highlighter close by and highlight those ones that stick out. You don't have to do all these, but might be like, Engaging your senses on a walk, like I need to get outside and get some fresh air more than I need to like get some flowers or drink tea. Like I need, I need some sunshine. So these are all ideas and you could highlight what sounds good to start with. And then I went in and wrote down every single verse that was in the emotional wellness section of this book. So a quarter of the book every verse that she wrote and i love how there were so many this isn't even the whole book this is one fourth of the book and so this i really challenge you 
um, to do this section because this is the meat of everything that she based all of this on is digging into God's word and learning about what God says about these areas. So what I have here, I would highlight the one that I want to do this week or that really resonates with me. I might check off a few challenges or highlight the ones that I want to do. And then throughout the week during my study time, I would either write these or highlight them in my Bible and then check off as I do it. And for example, let's read one of them. Psalm 4610. Psalm 4610. See if you could see this. This Bible's sweet. It actually has this one highlighted for me. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So this one is relating to your emotional wellness because you're remembering God is in control. Be still. He's got you. Focus on him, not the stressors in your life. And so there are a ton of verses for you to reflect on. What does this say about my emotional wellness? And I really encourage you to get your Bible out and look at those. Okay, let's move on to physical wellness. Physical wellness. The rest will go pretty quickly. I'm going to dig into a little bit of these challenges. But obviously, same pattern for the breath prayers and the verses to study. These are just relating to this wellness area. So can't sleep. If you're burnt out, you're longing for healing, you need to let go, you need provision. You might say things like, open the doors of opportunity, Jesus. You might think that thought as you breathe in. You are my strength, then breathe out. And they actually say what's better for your body um, to get those endorphins and to help you calm down and relax and stop that anxious thinking is to breathe through your nose and breathe out your mouth. And there's lots of different ways. There's the box breathing, um, breathe in for, hold it for, breathe out for, hold it for seconds. And so there's a ton of different things. Um, I'll go over um, something, a resource for that after. But um, actually my son, I've went, I've gone to counseling before and she has helped me with a lot of these techni techniques. So the breathing stuff actually is really helpful. Um, my son went to the hospital and was admitted for two weeks uh, at the end of last school year. And he was having a ton of pain. And with that came a lot of anxiety. And the very first tool they gave him were these breathing techniques and focusing on positive things and what he wanted and goals and things like that. So it's very similar to what we're talking about in this book. They're talking about in the medical world for pain, for anxiety, for all these different things. Uh, and what a better thing to focus on than the truth about who God is and who you are in him. Um, so let's look at the challenges for physical wellness. It says create a stress less, stress less rhythm chart. And that, when you look in the book, is on page 74. And that talks about um, like mapping out all the things that you do in your day and color coding them based on your moods to find patterns. That's something else that my counselors recommended uh, or self-help books that I've read in the past have recommended. Just finding those patterns so you can learn more about yourself so that you can move forward and get over those hurdles in your life. Um, take a digital break or creative activity. So maybe you need a digital detox or maybe you just need time to focus on what is it that you love to do. Um, so right here it says research shows creative activity activities like art, photography, playing music, or even gardening help you relax, lower your stress, and leave you feeling mentally clear and calm. And I'll even say I'm a terrible gardener. I can't keep anything alive, but being out in the garden still relaxes me, unless it's 110 degrees like it is today. But just find those things that even if you're not good at, you're like, this feels good. Like I like drawing and I cannot draw, but it makes me feel calm. Whatever those things are, learn about yourself, dig into them. Um, practice stop. This is a, a tool for when you're having panic attacks or anxiety. Um, it says to, it's from the um, 
oh, what's it called? The stress, uh, oh goodness, I'm having a brain fart. It's called by that mindfulness stress reduction. I can't think of the word. <laughs> Either way, the technique to help. It's one of those mindfulness strategies that are really famous and I'm having a brain fart right now. S is for stop, pause momentarily. T is for take a breath, reconnect with the rhythms of your breathing. Observe is O, how do you feel? Do a body scan. P is proceed, take action. So you're not just like in the moment going, going, going and just in a panic. You're taking a minute to stop, breathe and check in with where you are and what you're going to do about it. Uh, sorry for my non-medical or technical wording that I've got. This is not my expertise, which is why I'm learning about it with you. Okay, declutter the space that nurtures you. I'm loving this one. I have found that I procrastinate a lot by organizing things instead of doing the things I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> because that's my like happy place is I like where things, I can find things, I've got little systems, and so that calms me. So that's one thing I do when I'm stressed out is I'm like, what can I organize in the house? And to you, that might sound like, that sounds like torture, but that's, again, finding your calm space. Uh, and that's the next one, to create a safe space to restore calm. If you have a house that is constantly trashed, you have nowhere that you can call your own, even if it's just a chair in the corner of a room, keep it organized. Have a blanket there. Have a pillow that you like. Have a stack of books that you like to read. Set yourself up for this is my place I can go to get some calm. Um, that has helped me so much. Uh, and I'm blessed to actually have an office in the house now. And I've never had an office in our house. And we've been married 17 years, I guess, since our kids were born. I did have room before the kids were born. But for the past 12 years, I've never had a place where I could close the door. And that has been amazing. But that didn't stop me from having my own space. I've used closets that I've taken the door off of and turned it into like a little tiny office area. I have used corners of our bedroom. Find some kind of spot that you can claim as yours for your calm, safe spot to restore yourself, especially if you're having physical issues. You've got to have that physical space. Okay, enough about that one. Let's go on to spiritual wellness, which I know a lot of you said that was your high area. So in spiritual wellness, we've got breath prayers for critical thoughts, stress that steals your joy when you can't see the next step, for blessings, groans deeper than words. I have been there. I'm sure you have too. Longing for emotional healing. I have been there too. Spiritual wellness is so important and so complicated and any tools that we can get are are well are much appreciated in my life um so for example let's think this is too much for me i run to you jesus because our strength our we are made strong in our weaknesses um and so this is one of those reminders that we find Jesus in our hardships a lot of times, and sometimes we forget that. We just think this is hard, and I want it done with. And while it is hard, and while it's okay to want it done with, we need to recognize Jesus is still on the throne or in with you in that moment. So these help you focus on just seeking that peace in him, because sometimes things are so out of control that there's nothing we can do except rely on him. And that's where our true peace comes in healing. Um, longing for emotional healing. Give me courage to heal Jesus. Carry my pain. Um, blessings. Something about being critical and cynical and just frustrated with life. Showing yourself all the things in your life that are blessings or practicing gratitude. Um, I have a gratitude journal because I've been there. Uh, blessings, you could say or breathe in. You have been good to me, Lord. And then breathe out. Thank you for, and then name your blessings. Inhale, a blessing. Exhale, a blessing. Inhale, a blessing. Exhale, a blessing. Just use this as a time to meditate on your blessings. Okay, so here's some challenges. Journal for 10 minutes. Make something with your hands. Practice even breathing. Nurture laughter. 
pursed lip breathing to relieve pain, and listen to jazz or classical music. I listen to jazz and classical music all the time when I'm working because it puts me in the zone to just like relax and focus. And um, something about just that calm of sounds, you can have calm with smells, with candles, that's helped me as well. You can have calm with touch. When your spouse gets home, then you immediately go and give them a hug and kiss. When your kids get home, you give them hugs and kiss. You've got a pet, you're petting the pet. All your senses, tap into those senses. Um, and then all these verses, let's look up another verse while we're here. Psalm 1835. Let's see here. And then I will go over the last section. 1835. It says, try not to hit this camera. You make your saving help my shield and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. So you would check off that verse or highlight it or write it and work your way through as a daily Bible study or however you want to tackle this. Okay, last paper is social wellness. What if you're wondering how to if this is sounding too much, but you want to tackle a little bit of every section, what I did, I did not do everything in this. I, what I did was I went through and did the things that kind of spoke to me. So maybe there were like two breath prayers in each section I felt like resonated with me. And so I would work on those. Or there were two challenges I wanted to try and I would do those. And then make sure you I would really encourage you. I know it's a lot, but if this is a area you struggle with, then it needs to be a priority that you're getting into the word. So I really encourage you to do all the verses and then pick a few breath prayers and challenges that can kind of be your anchor for those verses. So uh, breath prayers for social wellness, relational detox, needing a friend, God's promises, and regret. So you might have friendships that are not healthy. You might be seeking friends, um, all kinds of things that you can do on this one. Thank you for being my friend, Jesus. Inhale. Give me courage to nurture friendships. Exhale. The challenges that it mentioned is look at a photo of a happy memory, schedule coffee with a friend, and show kindness, help someone, and smile. And these, um, it, they're really, really good explanations of the scientific, the science behind some of these things. Even it gets into the science of smiling, like what that does to your brain. Um, in the photo of a happy memory, it talks about how your brain sometimes thinks that when you're experiencing that moment just by remembering the memory is the same as if you were actually with that person in that point. So there's so much um, information in this book, uh, encouragement, science, all kinds of stuff that I'm not an expert at, but she is, and I really, really enjoyed the book, and I hope you did too. Let's grab one more verse before we head on out. Psalm 2710. I'm just picking Psalms because I'm already in Psalms. 2710. Oh, it's highlighted as well. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. And the reason that one's in here is because this is about social wellness. So it's about relationships. So you might have a bad relationship with someone and that could apply to this verse and how the Lord will always receive you, even if others forsake you. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is, um, well, first of all, uh, anybody have any questions? I just went over a ton of information and you might be like, wait, what? <laughs> Any technical questions or book questions or worksheet questions before I move on? Well, I give you a minute to type that in if you have a question. Don't forget, or if you don't know, Bonnie has a podcast too. Um, it's called Breathe. It's on Apple Podcasts. I'm sure it's on other stuff, but I listen to it on Apple Podcasts. It's just called Breathe uh, by Bonnie Gray, same as the book. And she just does little short devos. And at the end, she has a breathing exercise for you. They're real short. I listen to them in the car. They're awesome. So check out her podcast. Okay, I don't see any questions. So I'll go on to the next thing. Um, I did want to mention, several people have brought this up to me. And I got this in the mail 
Breath as Prayer. This book is very similar. The book we just read is a lot of um, the why and how to, and this Breath as Prayer is just breath prayers. So it is really cool in that it's basically um, a devotional for 85 days. It kind of goes over some techniques and things of how to do it. And it says to inhale, it's like you're smelling the flowers, and exhale is like blowing out the candles. So there's that in through the nose, out through the mouth practice. Um, so basically, they have a, de- a devotional real quick, and then a related to a Bible verse, and then they have a breath prayer for 85 days. So you could get a good three months of devotional out of this. So this is a great tool to use with that. It's called Breath is Prayer. And I'll put the link in there because I haven't really talked about this one. I actually haven't read this. I just got it, but I've heard really good things about it. And it looks really cute. And it's actually making me think, what if I made my own breath prayer cards out of the ones I love? You know how people have like scripture cards and they change them out on the desks? So that makes me think of different things to make. I don't know. Just a thought. Okay, let me fix this. So that's it. Thank you for joining me for this book club. Um, our next book is Get Out of Your Head. You guys voted. I had a couple books. You guys voted for this one. And I actually hadn't read it at the time I had you vote. And it's so amazing. Okay, so I know that we just talked about a lot of emotional, social wellness. And you might think, oh, it's the same thing. But this is not the same thing. This is about... Um, spiritual warfare basically about how satan attacks our thoughts and we are not in just a funk that sometimes it's outright battle it's spiritual warfare against um the unseen enemy and so it gets really deep and it's really good and i have already made the worksheets for that one and i wanted to show you real quick oh one foot on the floor I've got three worksheets. This is going to be the book for September. We'll have the book club on the last Friday of September. Um, And so she kind of has a mental story map. So I made it into a worksheet about your emotion and then what's contributing to that emotion and, and how it has like, I'm overwhelmed right now. And then you might write like work, kids, um, car, all those things. And then you write the details. And just so you can kind of brain dump all this stress in your head and look at it and go, I need to pray about this to God right now while I'm looking at all this and what do I believe about God? So I made that worksheet, which we'll go through on book club day. And then this is like what I just made for the breath thing. I outlined all of her tools in one spreadsheet and she's talking about interrupting what the enemy's lie is and replacing it with God's truth. For example, if you're feeling discontent. You might think, I'll feel better if I just stay distracted. And the consequence is you're going to feel insecure. So instead choosing distraction, you choose to be still, which gives you a new thought. Only being with God can satisfy me in his stillness. And then you feel more secure. And so we'll go through all that and that'll make a lot more sense. But I've got a major cheat sheet you're going to want to grab. And then the last thing, which I was really excited to make, is a coloring page. And these are all the choosy, the things you choose instead of the enemy's lines. And all these will go into the categories where this is all the details of that. But I have a coloring page I made just for you. All three of these papers are free with um, our book club and I'll put them in the Facebook group the day before the book club because I want to make sure you're focusing on reading the book and not playing with the worksheets. Read the book, Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Ellen and I will post the event for all that in a blog post. You'll be getting lots of information. Um, If you're on my email list will be the best place to get it. So if you're not on my email list, um, you won't know that stuff unless you're kind of trying to look for it but the email will come straight to you with all the information. That's amycenter.com forward slash subscribe, and I'll send you all the information. Right now, all you need to do is get this book and read it, and I will see you next month at the last Friday, and we'll talk about it and get all your freebies. Thank you guys so much. I know I just said a lot. I'm sure forgetting something and over-talking about something else. I love you guys. I hope you have a great weekend, 
and drop any questions you have. I'll try to put every link of every thought I've ever had. No, I'm just kidding. Love you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye.